So good evening, everybody. Good Shabbos evening. You know, it sounds funny to say good Shabbos on a Tuesday night. But it's not so funny because it, in halacha, there is a very strong point to say good Shabbos on a Tuesday night. Might here in the back, maybe have a seat, everybody. Very interesting law. Oh, hi. Let's say somebody went for a vacation on a boat in the Pacific Ocean, let's say, and he met with a lot of storms and for some reason, forgot what day of the week it is. It's mixed up. I'm not sure. The person could be in a coma, he wakes up. Different ways, the person doesn't know what, what day of the week it is. He doesn't know what Shabbos is. And he's a pious Jew who keeps Shabbos. What's he supposed to do? He doesn't know what Shabbos is. So the law is that he has to keep Shabbos every day, unless it's a matter of life and death. He has to uh, take care of the boat, to take away, has to take care of it. But if it's not a life and death emergency, he has to keep Shabbos until he comes to uh, a place where he'll find out what Shabbos is. Now, how about Kiddush? Well, we say he counts seven days and makes Kiddush every seventh day. So the question is, how can we make Kiddush? It might be Sunday, it might be Monday, it might be Tuesday. You make Kiddush every seven days. So the great commentaries tell us, which this was not part of what I was supposed to say tonight, but as I came in, I thought about this, and people say good Shabbos, that actually, we'll see, actually it's one of the later on, the last one, oh, you might see, right, number 14. Shabbos. Makar kalabrachas. Shabbos is the root, the origin of all blessings. According to when we keep Shabbos, that's how the week's going to be. Because the holiness and the greatness and the blessing of Shabbos goes to the whole week. It has the power to give every day of the week it's reason for existence because of Shabbos. So therefore, when we say Kiddush, even though it might not be Shabbos, unless we got a kind of, we sanctified Shabbos. It's not false because every day of the week has in it the power and the holiness of Shabbos because Shabbos gives every day of the week its power to exist. And therefore, every day has Shabbos in it. Therefore, the great commentaries tell us that doesn't contradict the day that we're in to say God is sanctifying Shabbos because every day has Shabbos in it. And therefore, we make here the Shiva that came out on Tuesday, says we don't know what it is. You say, God has Shabbos, saying the Shabbos, the, the, the the holiness and the power of Shabbos in this day is able, is able to say, oh, that God sanctified Shabbos. So coming in here and saying it's Shabbos, it's not so strange, not so funny, because every day has in it the power of Shabbos. And that's what the whole week derives its, its, its capability of existence is coming from Shabbos. And therefore, we can say good Shabbos and, and really mean it, you know? Because Shabbos is with us Tuesday and Wednesday and every day of the week. Okay, we started from the end instead of the beginning, but that, that's what came to mind today as I walked in here. The number one, quoting the Pusik 
in Exodus and Shmois that we say, Veni, 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 Yisrael, Oisi, Oilam. God says, amongst other words over there in that special portion of the Torah, it talks about Shabbos. Veni, between me and between you, the Jewish people, the Shabbos is a sign. Because that God created the world in six days, it's rested on the seventh day, the way we put it. Ois, ois means a sign. So the Chafetz Chaim says, why is Shabbos called a sign? It could be a, a remembrance, a, a remembrance of that God created the world. The other, so many other words could be used. And the word ois is just a sign. And he tells us a very interesting and a very uh, thought which we have to think about how precious Shabbos is to the Jewish people. He gives a marshal, an example, let's say a doctor has an office and outside of his office he has a sign, Dr. Goldstein, on the little stick, a little portion of his uh, uh, piece of wood, you know, it would be a very simple sign. But it says Dr. Goldstein. So people who need the doctor, they drive up to the uh, place where the sign is exhi exhibited. And for years, they come to Dr. Goldstein, knock on the door, come in, it takes care of them. One day, he'll say, Ruvain comes, and he comes, parks his car, and he knocks on the door, and there's no answer. Hmm. I wonder what happened. The doctor made one vacation, maybe he's not feeling well. But what can he do? So he just gets in his car, drives away, and then next time he comes with his child, he has his cold, and come up to the driveway, knock on the door, no answer. <coughs> Doesn't say why exactly, but the doctor's there, the sign's there, he must be, for some reason, he's just not, last two times he wasn't there for some reason, he doesn't know why, but whatever it is, the next week he comes with his wife comes, she needs something, the doctor, family doctor, dries up, knocks on the door, no answer. They're very puzzled, but they're very hopeful and pretty much sure that he's going to show up sooner or later because it says Dr. Goldstein. Obviously, he must be a doctor there. For some reason, he's not around, but they sure will come back. They came the next week. There was no sign left. The sign was taken down. Oh, no more Dr. Goldstein. He's not here anymore. You know what happened to him. But we're not coming back here anymore because he's, he's gone. Thought Tom, the sign was outside. He was still there. But now if they took away the sign. That means that he's not with us anymore. He went to Florida. He went to Israel. But he's not here anymore. So as the Chavetz Chaim, Jewish people have a lot of laws to keep in the Torah. We have a lot of laws. And sometimes we stray from some of the laws. We don't keep them like we should. Sometimes we speak uh, gossip, and horror. We shouldn't speak about it. Sometimes we're not so careful about keeping kosher. We should keep kosher. All different laws we have. But Shabbos, that's a sign. It's a sign because this is the... Number three and number 14. This is the foundation of the Jewish nation, of Jewish religion, the Shabbos. Why? This is Amunah. So the Amunah. And number three, it's the foundation of the belief in God. God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh day. He's the all-powerful. He's the one who gives us life. He creates everything that's going on, watches everything, makes things happen. So that's why we keep Shabbos, remembering Hashem created the world, 
six days, the rest of the seventh day, he's the all powerful. This was the whole foundation of our religion, the Shabbos. So maybe sometimes we stray away in some kind, we don't keep certain laws, and we have the Yetzirah, you know, evil within us pushes us and pulls us in different directions, but we still, Shabbos, we still have the belief in Hashem, He created the world. We have the, the hope and the, we want to come back and do what we have to do. But once that sign's taken away, uh-oh, person is not into Shabbos at all. He doesn't think about Shabbos like any other day of the week. It doesn't have any significance to a person. He doesn't even chop liver, he doesn't eat, or doesn't eat any cholt on the Shabbos. He doesn't connect to Shabbos at all. That's dangerous because that means that he's not around. First Jew is not here. He's not home. He's not keeping that sign. is taken away. The sign that a Jew is a Jew that has some connection to Shabbos. So then no matter other things he's not so careful about, it's not good, but he has that main ingredient that a Jew has, his belief in Hashem. So come back. Yeah, Shabbos, because God created the world, created me, created everybody, so I have to serve him, I have to do his will. But once that sign is taken away, a person doesn't keep Shabbos, no connection to Shabbos anymore, then that's why it says, Chafetz Chaim says, I see, it's a sign, a sign that somebody's still home, we're still connected. Once that sign is taken away, that old thing's name's not there anymore, there's no connection anymore, he's gone. There's no person coming back anymore. Person, there's no connection to Shabbos. What's going to bring him back to, to keep the Torah again? He doesn't believe in God, created the world. He doesn't believe that God's watching. He's there all the time. So this is, we're talking about Shabbos. We're talking about something very, very basic, very important, most important law in the, in the Torah, Shabbos. That's what we're talking about tonight. And... Some people have the impression that keeping Shabbos is very difficult, very boring. What do you do a whole Shabbos? It's a, uh, a day that you can't go here, you can't do there, you can't do this, you can't do that. Somebody who's very observant of Shabbos <coughs> might seem to some people that it's a very difficult day to live through because you can't get the entertainment you like to get and go places you like to go to. And we say in our prayers on Shabbos, and number two, God, you did not give Shabbos to the nations of the world. You gave us Shabbos with love. God gave us Shabbos with love. It's not a day of uh, torture, of boringness, and so on. It's God's gave with love to the Jewish people. We have Shabbos. The nations of the world do not have Shabbos. I said God did not give them Shabbos. They, we have this great honor, privilege, for us to keep Shabbos. I, I put the title Shabbos, exciting, enjoyable, holy, magic. It was a beautiful day. People who observe Shabbos in the real true sense of the word, word they appreciate this prayer that we say, Hashem, you did not give this to the nations of the world, you gave it to us with love. We, because you love us, you gave us Shabbos, Hashem, because it's the most un unbeatable day. You know why? Because Shabbos is a time that Hashem connects to the world. He makes himself available even more than Yom Kippur, Shabbos. It's a whole question, is Shabbos equal to Yom Kippur? I should say, is it equal to Shabbos? Or Shabbos is it not equal? But certainly, like Yom Kippur, for sure, there's many saying that Shabbos is even holier than Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, we have to fast the whole day, Shabbos we eat. Okay, we'll have to explain that. But Shabbos is such a holy day that who doesn't get inspired in Yom Kippur? The person who's most so far, far away from Judaism gets inspired in Yom Kippur. Why? 
because Hashem is so close. We feel His touch. We feel His holiness on Yom Kippur. And Shabbos, a person keeping Shabbos is also touched with God's holiness, His closeness to us. And the closest to Hashem to God is an unbeatable, unbeatable kind of, of pleasure that people get. A person will keep Shabbos in its entirety, careful not to do the wrong thing, but does the right thing, he feels that touch of God. God is touching his neshama. God's touching his soul, he's touching our hearts. And we have a very strong pulling like a magnetic force that's connecting us to Hashem, to God. And that's something that can't be beat. It's exciting. It's enjoyable. It's holy. It's magic. It's unbeatable. Shabbos. A person who keeps Shabbos wouldn't give it up for anything. Such a wonderful day of the week. Every opportunity, every of Kippur, we have once a year. Shabbos, we have once a week. We're able to connect with Hashem in such a strong way. Now we have a number four, the mitzvah of Einik Shabbos. The mitzvah of Shabbos to uh, drive pleasure, unlike Yom Kippur, that we have the five uh, painful things on Yom Kippur we have to be careful not to do, not to eat, not to drink, we don't wear shoes and so on. And we can't even wash too much Yom Kippur. And Shabbos is just the opposite. The Shabbos is a mitzvah to have oinig, enjoyment. So you say, well, why is that? Such a holy day, Hashem is above mundane desires and pleasures. We're connecting to Hashem. Why would Hashem want to have oinig Shabbos? Pleasure of Shabbos, we have to have three nice uh, dinners and Shabbos Friday night and Shabbos morning and then before Shabbos leaves us. And during the day, we're supposed to uh, have Einig Shabbos to eat good food, fruits and cakes and so on. Mitzvah Einig Shabbos to have pleasure on Shabbos. Why is that? Such a, such a wonderful holy day. I would think well, we should fast every Shabbos like Yom Kippur. Why are we eating so much like we at, on, on, uh, on, on, Yom, on Shabbos? A lot of people say, uh, oh, the diet, no diets in on Shabbos, you can eat whatever. That's not true, but I know people, that's the spirit of Shabbos to enjoy, to get pleasure. So I'm giving over two reasons why we have Einig Shabbos, and the pleasure of Shabbos. Number five, if you notice, me ain't Olam Habo. Shabbos is to remind us of the world to come. Let's take a look at the whole mechanics of Shabbos came to being. Everybody knows Hashem created the world in six days. He are, there should be light the first day, and every day afterwards he created part of the world until the seventh day, which everything was created already, God rested. Now, we imitate God on Shabbos that we also rest. We don't do, people who keep Shabbos don't do many activities that we do a whole week. We don't write, we don't cook, we don't wash clothing, we don't light fires. All these things we keep away from on Shabbos. Well, we are imitating Hashem. Because he rested and said, he did all the work on the six days, and he stopped doing all his activities on the seventh day. What was God's intention for us to learn from? He did that. We're supposed to do that also. We work a whole week, and we rest on Shabbos. We have a general rule that number seven, Shabbos. A person who worked before Shabbos, prepared all the food, he cooked and he baked and he, whatever has to be done. If he took care of everything, the food before, he has what to eat on Shabbos, so it's just for the Shabbos. Somebody who didn't prepare before, he won't have. 
God was telling us, I'm creating the world. And I created the six days, resting on the seventh day. That is what the whole world was all about. I want you to imitate me, Hashem says, because I want you to come to the seventh day. That means the ultimate, the eternal rest, the eternal pleasure, the eternal connection to God, the pleasure which is above all pleasures, the world to come. God promises us that we, we're worthy of it. We'll be able to come to the world to come. But how do you get there? You have to put the right action into place to get there. It doesn't come free. Just like God created, worked, so to speak, six days and rested on the seventh day, he wants us to imitate him. That we, just like in the mundane earthly world, if we want something good, we have to put work into it. Personal work before Shabbos to make his delicious fish for Shabbos, to make his delicious liver for Shabbos, chicken soup for Shabbos, chow, kugel, whatever you have on Shabbos, he had to work for it before it didn't come by itself. You have to do something to get it. It doesn't appear all of a sudden, magic, hocus pocus, that all the food appears. A lot of every balabosta who puts in a lot of work to make things for homemade food, they put a lot of work into the Kavit Shabbos, all these good foods we're talking about. Hashem's telling us, I want you to have pleasure in the world to come. Certainly, eternal pleasure, forever and ever. That's what Shabbos represents. It's like the world to come. It represents the world to come. But to come to that in this world, we have to put work into it. We have to put toil and time and whatever it takes to make good food. To have for Shabbos, the same way we want to come to the world to come, to live eternally together with Hashem in the world to come. We have to put work into it. It doesn't come by itself. If we put the right time and effort into our days in this world, we'll be able to enjoy the world to come, the eternal presence, togetherness with Hashem together, with the most enjoyable feeling, life, eternally, that a person will be able to live. Something we can't even... We can't even have any idea how great it is, how pleasurable it is. It's something way above our understanding. But God said, I want you to get pleasure on Shabbos. I want you to eat good food on Shabbos because I want you to taste what the world is all about. The world is all about pleasure. But how did you get that pleasure? Well, God worked for six days and he rested the seventh day. He enjoyed the world that he created in those six days. I want you to work six days and seventh day on Shabbos in order for you to realize that when it comes to deriving this great pleasure of the world to come, it takes work. It doesn't come by itself. What is that work? Torah. Studying Torah and keeping the laws of the Torah. That's the work Hashem wants us to put in. The pleasurable work, the wonderful work of serving Him on our life, during our lifetime, in order for us to be able to come to the world to come and enjoy that great pleasure of the world to come. So putting it in a nutshell, why that Hashem wants us to have pleasure on Shabbos, to eat good food, for us to feel what it means to have pleasure and how we have to come to that pleasure. God wants us to imitate him. He created and he rested in order to come to that rest that he had enjoyed the world that he created, it took work. The way for us to, in this world, to enjoy ourselves, it takes work. In order to come to the eternal pleasure of the great connection to Hashem that will enjoy the world to come, which has no boundaries to it, the enjoyment, it's something way above our understanding because that's spiritual pleasure. On the Shema, a soul will derive pleasure, which is way above our body, the body, the pleasure of our bodies, that pleasure is way above anything we can imagine. How do we come to that? It takes work. It doesn't come by itself. And that's what the Shabbos was supposed to uh, think about that. As we're eating that delicious chom and delicious Shabbos food, we're supposed to say, well, this is nothing compared to the pleasure we're going to have in the world to come. 
be the best cook and the best food in the world, what well, doesn't compare to the pleasure we're going to have in the world to come. Well, how do we get this food? It didn't come by itself. Somebody worked on it. So we bought it. The person who was in the store, they worked on it. We had to make money to buy it. It didn't come by itself. The person made it by itself. But it took work. So we're supposed to think about the Shabbos. We're enjoying this food. This is nothing compared to what's going to in the future. But we have to think how God wants us to come to that ultimate pleasure. That is one uh, reason why Hashem tells us, I want you to have pleasure in Shabbos. To get us to think. Shabbos number seven. One who busies himself, toils, Arab Shabbos, before Shabbos, he will be able to enjoy the pleasures of Shabbos. It comes through toil. It comes through action. Now, I've brought down here another reason that Hashem wants us to enjoy uh, food on Shabbos, enjoy the different pleasures of Shabbos. Because, again, it boils down to the same thing, just a little different approach. The great commentators tell, tell us that when we eat food on Shabbos, we're supposed to think to ourselves, hmm, today we're eating such delicious food. How come? A whole week we don't have this chult. This, uh, the come, Lachmaji and uh, Kiba. How come we're having it on Shabbos? Well, because today's special. It's very similar to what the Rambam tells us why we fast. Why if someone's fast, do we have fast days? People don't realize the purpose of a fast day is to get us to think, why am I fasting today? I like to eat. I'm fasting. Well, something must have happened today. What happened? Well, the Holy Temple was destroyed. Why was it destroyed? Because the Jews didn't act correctly. So... If I want it to be built, I better look into my actions and do tshuva and think about what I can, how, what I can do to make it better myself. That's what Rambam tells us. That's why we fast on the fast day. It's not the fasting itself. It's the idea that we're supposed to think about when we're fasting because if we wouldn't fast, it wouldn't shake us up. We wouldn't think about it. So now a person's fasting, you, you, have to, you, you feel something different. Why am I different? Because what happened in this day? Something bad happened to the Jewish people, and we've got to rectify it by looking into our actions and thinking what I can do to make things change. And they should be good for the Jewish people. We shouldn't have to fast anymore. The same way that the Rabbi Babylon says that we, we eat on Shabbos good food, the same purpose. It's just a different approach. On the fast day, we don't eat to wake us up. On Shabbos, we do eat to wake us up. It's special food. Special food must be reason for it. Well, what, what's the reason why we're eating special food on Shabbos? Well, because Hashem created the world. We're supposed to think about it. Hashem created the world and the rest of the seventh day. Well, why did God create the world? Well, because we know He created the world voracious for the Jewish people to study the Torah and, and, and be involved in keeping the Torah. That's the purpose why He's created the world. So that's what we're supposed to think about on Shabbos. Many of us are, are a little guilty that we uh, sort of start off Shabbos with the right approach, but we don't finish off the right way. We start eating good food, uh, delicious, and this food and that food, and have pleasure, but we forget to think about the next part of it. Why are we eating good food? Why it's so special about this day? We're supposed to take the next step. Like the Ram says, the next step of fasting is to think. The rabbi says a person fasts on the fast day and doesn't think about why he's fasting, he took the un unimportant part of the fast day and didn't do the important part of the fast day. The important part of the fast day is to think, to realize the Jewish people sinned and that's why we suffered. We have to do tshuva. A person just fast and doesn't think about what the reason for the fasting, he took the tuffle and not the ikka. He took the unimportant part. The same way a person who eats a shop is good food. And he doesn't think about why I'm eating this good food. doesn't get a, a thought of, well, it tastes different because God created the world. That's why we're celebrating God's creation. 
But why did he create the world? Some people don't want to don't think about these things. It scares them too much. Why am I doing this world? Why did God create me? They don't want to think about it. But they're very, uh, uh, very childish, immature, to be afraid to think. Why, what are we doing here? What's the purpose? If God created the world, what does he want from me? We have to think about what God wants from us. He created the world, he created the Torah, he created the Jewish people, he created our neshama, he created our souls. So this is something that we have to take seriously as we're eating, the, indulging in the good food. Yeah, we could even, even tonight even, we could, we could uh, cheat a little bit tonight in eating the good food and think, why are we eating this good food? Because it's Shabbos food. And what's Shabbos? Shabbos is what we're talking about tonight. That's why God wants to think what we're doing in this world. That's what people do not do in this world. They don't think. They just get involved with all kinds of who knows what in the rat race, in the American dream, in everything, everything but. But to think about what they should think about, that is something that we have to try to tell ourselves.